Hello, my name is Peter Robak and I come from the Elmer team at CSC. This presentation is about Elmer workflow when working on the command line. So we are not dealing with Elmer GUI here, but instead looking how to use the tools from the command line of a Linux operating system. So if we scratch Elmer GUI, this is how the workflow basically looks on paper. So we have a tool, typically Elmer Grid, that creates the meshes. We have a tool that creates the command file, the SIF file, typically Emacs, VI or some other editor. Uh, we use Elmer Solver to uh, read in the mesh and the SIF and compute the equations and uh, write the results. Uh, the primary results are typically in VTU files and visualized with Pataview. We can create additionally result files that can be used as a restart for Elmer Solver simulations. Uh, also, we can have some uh, more compact results, uh, scholars or lines, etc., and save them uh, to an ASCII file and visualize that using MATLAB or Octave. And this slide shows the steps in the serial non-GUI workflow. So if we uh, work on the command line, basically we may have uh, five steps. So we build the mesh, we, we uh, fill in the solver input file, we may uh, compile some objects that are needed to run Elmer, we execute the simulation and visualize the results. Hello, here I have opened the official virtual machine of Elmer, which is currently built using Ubuntu 20. And I'll demonstrate the command line workflow for you. First, let's open the terminal window. I increase the size with Ctrl plus for your convenience. Uh, in this setup, we should have the Elmer source files in the Elmer pen. You can actually check that they are recent, make a git pull, already up to date. Here we have the tests. Under pen tests. Uh, I have chosen two tests for to be uh, looked at. The first one is Elastic Beam Hinged 3D, and I want to copy it to uh, a demo directory, which I'm going to create. Now I copy this Elastic Beam Hinged 3D to this directory. And the second one that I intend to show you is curved by half, and I copy that as well. Like that. Now let's go to the demo. And here, go to this directory, and we can see what files there are available. Now, if you don't know how to run this case, you can always study the run tests, which gives you hint how this case is run. So you see here, <coughs> uh, we use 14.2 uh, to transfer the hinge.mesh into Elmer format. So that is our first step. So we take the mesh, Elmer grid, or to do hinge msh and then the auto print like this and we should now have a, a direct hinge which includes the the mesh directory uh, to run the case we can see that Elmer Solver start info refers to hinge.sif and we need to run this by saying Elmer Solver. It takes roughly one second on my virtual machine here. 
and now it should have written a, a Paraview file and I can open Paraview to visualize it. So file open, go to directory hinge and here we have the v2 file and here we can see the displacement and from Mrs. stresses. So this is a beam that has two holes in it and uh, basically these don't have any friction so the beam is free to rotate over the two holes. Here you can see the computational mesh. It's simple triangular mesh that has been uh, extruded for a few element layers. Now we can study the SIF file now when we see what, what we have there. I open it with Emux, no window, so we can see it maybe easier. So here we start going from top to bottom. Uh, in the header section we should see that okay we actually are using this hinge directory simulation section nothing special except this extruded mesh level so we create four four layers of nodes that is three layers of, of 3d elements and the extruded max, max coordinate is 0.1 so we extrude it with 10 centimeters in in uh, SI units uh, to get the mesh to become three-dimensional. In the body we define one material and one equation. The material is very ideal, Poisson ratio 0.3 and Young's modulus 1000. Um, the equation includes just one active solver, which is the stress solver. And here we have pretty basic linear system settings. Uh, the case is assumed to be linear, so we just use one nonlinear system iteration. And we have force on the top, and uh, for the uh, two boundaries for the left and right circle, we use normal tangential coordinate system and in there we define that the normal component must be zero. We could uh, use this other uh, way to define the normal tangential coordinate system but, but this uh, works pretty nice in this case and the same for the second one. So the first component of the normal tangential coordinate system refers to the normal component. That means that the Tangential components two and three are are free to free to choose their value. Uh, we need to fix the z component because otherwise this could float in the z direction freely. So we set the front face to be zero, and uh, we have a reference norm to check the consistency of the test case. Okay, let's see once again the results. Now when you so what we are solving for, so here we have two hinges and a beam that is loaded on top. And here we have normal tangential coordinate system and define that the normal displacement must be zero. And uh, the uh, forefront is also fixed to, so that the Z direction is enforced to zero. Okay, the second case I promised for you is curved pipe half. So let's copy. Curved pipe half here. Yes. And uh, you can also here see from the one test. See make how the mesh is created. This is Elmer grid format with the suffix 
.grd, so we can use the magic numbers one and two to create Elmer solver mesh files. And that Elmer grid one two curl pipe that and we again see that Elmer solver starting for refers to case dot sif. We could also do same file as a command line argument like this and launch the simulation. So it takes a little bit longer than the previous one. So about 20 seconds on this platform. And again, we can in the power view, we can go here and, uh, and maybe open the different directories. So we open here, demo code pipe, and here we have the results. So what is this? We have a curved pipe where we have inflowing um, inflowing velocity coming in. So if I can visualize the vector field like that. can maybe visualize all the nodes, every, all points like that. So we have basically the flow coming in and uh, it carries the temperature. This is actually half of, of a and uh, a tutorial case, I just split the half so that it is a little bit faster to compute. Here we have a inlet velocity conditions. We can actually look at the C file, how it looks like. Max window C file. Let's see what there is here. So we check the keywords. One, this is the mesh database. Uh, include path and results directory are on the working directory. Uh, pretty basic simulation section. Some constants which are probably not used at all. Uh, we have two bodies, one for the pipe and one for the fluid that goes in, in the pipe. Um, we have two equations. The first one is the Navier-Stokes equation, which is stabilized and includes some nonlinear effects. We use some uh, uh, rather fast uh, linear solver strategy, the EDRS. It performs pretty well on this case. We also have a heat equation, which also is solved stabilized because there is a, a convection term. Here we use PCTS tab L with incomplete L1 preconditional. And for the fluid, we compute both the heat and the flow. Well, whereas for the pipe, we only compute the heat. And the fluid is water at room temp temperature. So basically viscosity is, is uh, slightly dependent on the temperature, but here we neglect that feature. Uh, the other material is iron. And, uh, well, we assume constant properties also here and uh, boundary condition for the inflow, 
is as follows. So we have hot fluid coming in. And uh, here we define the profile using MATSI language. We could also uh, define the profile using the inlet velo function. So it's a user defined function. So let's do like this here. Um, the boundary conditions between the uh, pipe and the fluid is no slip conditions. Uh, for the outflow, we have basically normal tangential velocity components such that the tangential components are set to zero, but normal component is unknown. And for the symmetry conditions uh, on the half plane, we, we enforce the y velocity to be zero. Let's say the listener changes. And if I now try to run the case, you can see that it, it complained, complains about the inlet velo not being known. So let's see what we can do about it. So we should have the inlet velo here defined. So it's a simple parabolic profile for the inlet velocity. And compile it with the script that comes with Elmer. Like this. Now when we try to run it again, it goes well. Matsy is quite expensive, but here it's only used on the boundary, so I don't expect to see major change in the in the computation time and indeed it takes roughly 20 seconds or so now and we can uh, basically verify that the results are the same let's see we can open here the case again and uh, if we choose the same Uh, field as here, we can basically activate the uh, new results and you see that there is actually no change at all. So both inlet velocities gave, gave the exact same answer. Okay, this concludes the short tutorial. I hope you learned something of this. Have a nice day.